We are kicking off today's show with a conversation on what's new in HIV clinical care. Joining us now is Allison Agu from Johns Hopkins University. Allison, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Well, we appreciate the time. Now, I want to jump into your HIV research. Yeah. It seems as though there's a lot of emphasis on the impacts of young people. Tell me why that's so important. Yeah, no, thank you for that. So young people, I usually think about that between the ages of 13 to 25 or so, they make up about one in five of people who continue to acquire HIV in the U.S. It's about 30,000 people every year. They have the highest rates of HIV acquisition, but also they're, it's harder to get them sort of engage in care, get them virally suppressed, which is the ultimate goal. So there is an important emphasis on getting that population reached and getting modalities of treatment to help them get to undetectable or, or to end the epidemic in that population. Absolutely. Yeah. The goal is curing in children, is that right? The curing kids, tell me more about that. Yeah, sure can. So certainly there's, we are hearing more and more about cure research and we've seen now I think our seventh adult patient who has had a bone marrow transplant or stem cell transplant where they've had long-term remission of the HIV. At this conference, I will be highlighting data that was presented at an earlier conference in the year on remission in children. We've heard about the Mississippi baby where there was a child who went on for a prolonged period of time off of antiretroviral therapy and who went on, ultimately rebounded. There's now more research in basically replicating that long-term remission in children. So six kids in a study getting to remission and now four of those kids being beyond 48 weeks without any viral rebound. This is teaching us a lot about where we need to go for potential long-term remission towards cure in children. So exciting research presented at other conference that I'll highlight today as well. Yeah, potentially groundbreaking. Groundbreaking research, actually. Wonderful. Now, what would you say at this point yeah. is like the most profound idea or even innovation coming out of HIV clinical sciences? Yeah, so I think number one, it is expanding our armamentarium of both treatment and prevention. So thinking beyond just having people take pills, thinking about how to expand how you give medicines to people. So that's injectable therapies, that's moving beyond therapies at all to broadly neutralize the antibodies and other things to hopefully get people to be virally suppressed if they're already positive or to help them not even acquire HIV at all. Right. So you'll hear at this conference and other conferences before that have happened earlier, the injectables like lenacaprevir or cabotegravir, just things that are coming to literally meet people where they are to hopefully get them to, be, again, be suppressed if they're not, um, if they're positive or to prevent them from being acquired HIV. So very exciting. And I would think throughout this process, yeah. besides the actual treatment, it's important to engage in knowledge sharing. And how does that impact new research and new practices coming along the way? That's a great question. So I think part of what that means is making sure you have all the players at the table, if, if that makes sense. So it's 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 making sure you not just have the communities that are impacted, because that you have to lead by community and making sure you engage them and what are the challenges, but then researchers at different levels. So clinical research, implementation science research, basic science research, and having the conversations be collective conversations to then figure out how to best move therapies forward, but also what therapies are most needed directed by community. Valuable research. Thank yes. you so much for joining us. No, thank you. Thank you very much.